Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel. Now this series is actually part of my more comprehensive course called Full Stack E-Commerce App Development with CIF UI, Node.js and Postgres. And this course is available for sale on my Teachable website. You can see that I'm still working and developing this course, but a lot of material is already available. Uh, including quick tour of Express.js, building user registration system, introducing the MVC pattern, building user login, tab view and protected screens, and I just added fetching, displaying, and even creating products. So you can see there are a lot of sections that are still pending, so they are being worked on. So this is a complete course. Now, if you're watching it on YouTube, then you will get a couple of those videos so you get an idea of the course and if you are more interested in digging deep and diving deep into the course then you will check out the link in the youtube description for the full course now this course is available for introductory price of 89 dollars once the course is completed then the price will be changed to 149 so make sure that you take advantage of this deal this is the best course out there, very detailed course, which allows you to become a full stack developer with Swift UI, Node Express JS, and a real Postgres database. All right. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. Let's now set up our database. And I'm also going to show you that how you can connect to the database using Beekeeper Studio. Now make sure that you have installed Postgres app. And you can see that I am already running the Postgres app. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Postgres app, check out the previous lecture in which I have uh, indicated a couple of different tools that you need to download. So I'm gonna open up the Postgres app. I'm gonna click on this and open Postgres. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, don't worry, you may not see the same thing over here. Like you may not be able to see some of the databases that I have created, okay? And there might be an initialize button instead of server settings. So click on the initialize button so you can initialize it and make sure it is running. That's all you need to do. The only reason I don't see the initialize button is because I've already initialized it. By default, you may be able to see a couple of different databases, including Postgres, Template1, and some database associated with your username. It's not going to be Adam Sharp, that's my username. So it's going to be based on your username for the Mac. So how do we create our new database? Right? That's what we're here for. I'm going to go ahead and go to my username. Just double click on it. If you double click on it, now you can see the console. You can see that I am currently on this particular server or the actual uh, database part of it, like this one, Adam Sharp. So what I want to do is to create a database and name it something. So I'm going to use the command create database and the name of the database smart shop db and make sure that you put a semicolon if you don't put a semicolon and run the command then it's if without it it's going to think that you're continuing with the uh, the command or the statement that you're writing but semicolon is basically the end of the statement now again the name of the database you can name it anything you want i'm just calling it smart shop db and press enter. Okay, so now it's saying create database. It just said create database and nothing more, nothing less. And another thing to note, if you go back to your app, you will be able to see SmartShot DB. So this means the database was created successfully. Now this database doesn't really have any custom tables right now. Uh, don't worry, we're gonna add the tables, but in a different way. So we have created the database at least. Now, in order to connect to that database, you can use, you know, connect and then the database name, smart shop DB. And now it says over here, 
Now you are connected to the database SmartShop DB as a user Azam Sharp. And you can see over here, it also says you're connected to SmartShop DB. You can run some commands from over here also if you need to, but uh, I'm going to show you how to connect it through Beekeeper. So apart from creating the database, we're not really going to do much over here because this is in the terminal, right? I mean, if you want more visually appealing interface, then you can use some graphical user tools, uh, graphical UI like Beekeeper. So let me go ahead and say over here, let's try to quit. And how can we open a Beekeeper? But before that, if you want to connect to any of these databases, you can simply double click on it and it will automatically be connected. You can see that I simply double click on it and now I'm automatically connected. Okay, so let me start Beekeeper. Beekeeper Studio. This will be the community edition. So this will be the interface for your Beekeeper. The first thing to note over here is new connection and connection type. Beekeeper can be connected to many different kinds of databases, including MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite, you know, all of these different ones. Our database is Postgres, so let's just select Postgres. As soon as I select Postgres, it fills out a couple of this information. Connection type is Postgres, yes. Running on local host, that's fine. Port number 5432, that's the default port on which the Postgres server is running, that is also fine. Username and password, hmm. and the database name. Well, database name, I think we know, it's called SmartShop DB. That's fine, but what is the username? So by default, whenever you create a, uh, you know, a database using the Postgres app, it comes with the username Postgres. A password is nothing. Now we can press a test button over here and it looks like connection is good. And I can also press the connect button and there we go. Now we are connected to the SmartShop DB database. Now you can see a lot of different tables and stuff going on over here, right? Uh, these are just by default. So these none of these tables are for us or our custom tables. So all of these tables are generated when we created the database. And you can open up these tables, but just don't mess around with these tables. So if I open up this columns table, I can say view data. You can see it has all these rows and columns, and it provides you with a really nice and a beautiful UI. Right, it's pretty nice. You can even edit these things out, but don't. I mean, uh, this is not our table. This table is used for management purposes, so I would not touch these things. So I would just close it. And you can also query, so you can write your SQL query over here. Now, in our application, the e commerce app that we're building, we're not really going to be creating tables using. Beekeeper. Beekeeper will be used to visualize the data and we can maybe add the data, remove the data, but creating the schema of the tables, this will be done by our application and we will use migration provided in uh, uh, Express using SQLize and we will do that, all right? So at least we have the Beekeeper connected. Just don't close it. I mean, this is a database you're gonna be using SmartShop DB, so we are already connected to that. That's perfectly fine. The next step would be for us to structure our backend and front end. All right, so that we will learn in the next lecture. All right, so now let's go ahead and learn that how we can structure our project. And this is going to be important because sometimes what I've seen, at least with my students, is they put the client, meaning their web app or their Swift UI application into the same folder as the server. And now you will have a problem when you're deploying your application because everything is like mixed up. So here's my simple solution. Create a folder, let me create a folder. Let's call it Smart Shop. Nice, nice and simple, right? Smart Shop, that's it. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead inside the folder. And I will have two folder, one for the client, one for the server. All right. So if I want to create a folder for the client, I can go ahead and do that. What should I call it? Smart shop, sorry, for the server. So I'm just going to create a folder for server. I'll call it smart shop server. Now for the client, client basically means uh, the Swift UI application. I can just use Xcode to create a project inside the smart shop folder. In other words, there will be one top level folder. And in that you will have a folder for smart shop server, which will have the node application, the backend server. And you will have another folder, separate folder for your client, meaning your Swift UI application. So let's go ahead and launch Xcode. And while Xcode is launching, actually we can even initialize the smart shop server folder. Okay, so how do I initialize it? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create a new window. And I'm gonna jump into the server folder because server folder is currently empty, right? And I'm going to run from over here, npm init. So npm stands for node package manager. And what we are saying is that this folder, which is a smart shop server folder, this will be our uh, server or our node project. So we're initializing a node project using npm init. And it's going to work because you already installed node, remember? So npm is node package manager. Um, in Swift, it is Swift package manager, SPM. So it's kind of like the same thing. NPM is used to install packages. Once you run this, it's going to ask you some questions. What is the package name? What is the version number, description, entry point, test command, git repository, and all that stuff. I'm just going to press enter. I'm not going to enter anything in there. Uh, if you do ls into the folder, the only thing you will see in that folder is package.json. Uh, which simply contains some configuration stuff, uh, like what is the project about, what is the name of the project, number of dependencies, which we have it installed, so things like that. But at least we have our Smart Shop server folder, and that will be where all the server code will be living, okay? Now, for the client, meaning for the Swift UI app, we are using Xcode, so I'm going to create a new project. App is fine. The name is kind of like up to you. I mean, you can call it Smart Shop. You can call it Smart Shop Client. It's completely up to you. Whatever you want to call it is perfectly fine. All right. Um, if I call it Smart Shop, then the main folder is also called Smart Shop. And inside there's another folder called Smart Shop. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Okay, not a big deal. I can call it Smart Shop Client also. I'm just going to name it Smart Shop, but you can come up with a better name. That's fine too. Or you can change the name of your a root folder to something else, all right? Okay, smart shop and smart shop server. And there we go, all right? So the main thing is you need to keep your folder separate. That's all. You created a root folder and you can call this anything you want, smart shop, smart shop root. And inside that we have two folder. One is for the server. This is where we will write our code for node and express. And one is for the client. Basically, this will be our Xcode Surf UI application. And if you have that arrangement, now we are ready to get started with uh, building our project. And we'll start with you know, creating tables and implementing registration stuff. So uh, installing packages. So all of that stuff we'll be learning in the future tutorials.